Um, welcome to uh, this month's uh, member masterclass. Um, this is a, an initiative that we run now on a monthly basis, uh, sometimes more, uh, which gives an opportunity for our members to share information that they have that they believe is useful for the overall industry. So it's not sales materials. Um, it's you know it's not trying to uh, you know, elicit any kind of response from you other than for you to learn uh, what 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 they're able to share. So this could be anything from insights that they might be able to share. Uh, processes, structures, tools, etc. Um, throughout the process. If you are a member company, you are welcome to to um, uh, step forward and actually offer your services to offer some of these masterclasses as well. Uh, we do record the sessions, which you will have noticed when you when you logged in, I believe. Uh, which does mean that if you do think it's interesting, you can obviously share the recordings at a later stage with with colleagues or or um, uh, you know peers that that you believe uh, would would benefit from this. Um, so today's session uh, is going to be led by the Digital Tree Holdings Group uh, by Stavriana, um, who I'll hand over to in a moment. Uh, Stavriana, if you don't mind just uh, driving the charts for a couple of seconds so we can we can just run through a couple of uh, housekeeping pieces. So for those who are not members of the IAB, just so that you know, we are a member body. Uh, we have about 65 now different companies uh, as members of IAB MENA. Uh, and these are companies ranging everything from advertisers through to tech companies, through to agencies, publishers, uh, measurement companies, and so forth. So a really wide group of companies that are members of this organization, all focused on effectively the same thing, which is working together to help grow the industry. And that's the kind of, these are the kind of initiatives that we do uh, to do that. These, these themselves are regular series. You'll, you'll, you'll see that we do um, publish uh, a, a, a calendar of, of uh, the next few that, that you'll see in a moment. Um, and everyone is welcome to attend this, both members and non-members, because we believe it's it's right to give the opportunity for people to learn more, uh, to grow both personally and for their businesses as well. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, you won't see any sales materials or any pitch documents. It's very much about insights and knowledge. To give you an idea of what's coming up next, obviously today we're looking at uh, un uh, unlocking growth, a data-driven data multi-channel approach. Um, in two weeks' time, we'll be um, turning over to Augustus Media, who are sharing with us the technicalities of developing modern apps uh, using AI. So how AI has really affected the way that they're able to develop modern, modern apps uh, in the marketplace. And I think that'll be a very interesting session uh, if you're able to make that. You can use the uh, QR code to register. Um, or obviously reach out to us and we'll send you the links if necessary. Uh, just after that in August, um, Chain Reaction, another one of our members, will also be focusing on AR, but this one more around performance media and how you can use Gemini AI to add features and functionalities to your websites, applications to drive greater performance. Um, so a very AR-focused uh, summer, it seems. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, Stavriana from the Digital Tree Group. Uh, who will take us through the remainder of the presentation today. If you do have questions, either put them into the chat or perhaps leave them towards the end. Uh, we will we will leave enough time to have a proper conversation towards the end of the presentation um, so that you know, can really engage with some of this context. It's very interesting. Over to you, Stavriana. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, a little bit nervous because yeah, it's an huge organization and I'm very excited about this um, session today. The goal and the scope of this presentation is to share some insights and findings and findings and best practices for what we gather working in, uh, in the region and have a very fruitful uh, conversation with all of you towards the end so we can exchange um, ideas. Feel free to share, as Ian said, your questions during the presentation within the chat, and I will be able to answer even during the presentation. And definitely, there is enough uh, time towards the end for proper discussion and answering questions. So from a recent study that we found out from Bain and Company, which is a statistical company, in, I think, in the States, uh, it, it turns out that 20, in 2023, companies uh, with strong data-driven marketing strategies, they notice a five times increase uh, in the customer retention compared with other companies that they didn't invest in data-driven strategies. And this is to just to show why data uh, are important 
for all your marketing and sales activities. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Wilfredo Pareto 80-20 principle of uh, when it comes to your customers. Um, by studying the top 20% of your most successful uh, clients, you can very easily uh, design and identify how to attract similar people and make sure you can increase your profit rather than always trying to discover who your audience can be. And before we deep dive into the rest of the information, uh, what, we, what is defined uh, as traditional or massive channel or omnichannel, because very frequent, we hear a lot of buzzwords or a lot of uh, terminology and it can be overwhelming and very confusing to toggle and manage everything. So we have the traditional or transactional uh, way, uh, as you may have heard, which is one dimensional and it's one way. Client, a, a person, a consumer or client wanted something, they went to a store, they pick it up and they left. So it was one way. Um, the multi-channel approach is that uh, you have various channels. So you have a store, you have a free, an online store, so two, and then you have SMS promotions, let's say. So you have three channels of communication with your client, uh, but they are not connected. So I might be a store client, but I'm, I'm not aware of the SMS promotions you're doing, for example. So you have multi-channels, but disconnected. And then the omni-channel, which is the new term over the last five years, is that all your channels are integrated and everything is in centralized with the client and the main point of interest. So if I am a client, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say if I'm a client at Zuma, because I go there regularly, which is a restaurant, then they know wh whether I interact with them via newsletters or I engage with them on their social media or I book only online through their website, uh, or I pick up the phone and make a reservation, they have all my data, they know who I am, they know how frequently they go. I go and they know what I like to order. So this is the idea scenario of, um, of your marketing activities and your marketing strategy. So if I need to break it down, what do we mean by data-driven, multi-channel marketing? Which, okay, by pure definition, uh, data-driven marketing is all the market, it's a marketing strategy that is based on data. That, that data supposedly are coming from insights that we received from consumer interactions and maybe third-party activities we did. In order to understand, and we need to better understand the data, consumer motivation, behaviors, preference, what they like, what they don't like, by analyzing this data that we gather from various resources and interactions we had with the customer. When we have a clear understanding of this data, let's say, that we gathered, then we have more power as marketeers or as content creators or as salespeople to tailor made our message, to personalize our campaigns, to adjust our product or service to better serve existing or potential or similar clients to what we have now. And that's by default guarantees better results, more success rates in, um, uh, in booking or securing a client or a client making a purchase. So why we need data-driven is because uh, multi-channel marketing. If you have a multi-channel approach or an omni-channel approach, um, you reach definitely more people. You definitely boost your engagement because I see the same message again and again or you talk with me uh, regards whenever I feel ready to engage with you. There is brand consistency that me as a client 
I have the same experience with which with whatever channel I interact with you. Even if I give you a call or I walk into your I walk into your store or I receive a newsletter or I or I saw your ad on social, let's say. There is a brand consistency. I have the same satisfied or unsatisfied experience with you across your channels. Ideally, we want satisfied experience. And we streamline the customer journey. I want to make a parenthesis here. So for many of our clients, they are coming from the retail sector. One of their biggest challenge is that they don't know how to design uh, their customer journey because they say, I don't know how it's, my client is everyone in Cyprus or they come with their family. So you don't have like a, a clear understanding of what, what points or what steps their customer takes uh, until they make a purchase. Did they see my ad on social media and then they came to the store after two weeks? Um, did they saw my newsletter about the offers? That's why they went to the website and they bought stuff. What is happening? And of course you can tell me if I'm running ads that everything uh, is targeted, you can see the source that drove those results. However, they, the challenge here is that they don't know that specific client, how frequent it comes to the, uh, to, the, to the source, how it behaves, how it purchases, and how it interacts with the other channels, uh, the client, marketing channels, the client uses. So streamline the customer journey is one of the most important uh, reasons for me to use data-driven uh, multi-channel ac uh, activities. Uh, Accent did another research. I like statistics and data. I think they always prove a point. Uh, release a case study, a research case study they did, I think, in, by the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. Uh, they interview marketing executives, and 64% of them, they strongly agree that data-driven marketing is crucial in their today's activities and in today's landscape, which means there is a lot of competition and more and more brands are using these um, activities and approaches in order to enhance their sales and their brand loyalty. So having said this, if I had to choose like some key points that are important for moving forward and challenges uh, we face, I would say first a part of data is the number one uh, thing nowadays because I'm sure it happens the same to you, but everyone is switching and turning to first party data with all the restrictions we face already with cookies and CCA and GTPR and all the br big browsing uh, companies announcing that they will increase even, they will tighten up even more their privacy, uh, their privacy. Uh, it's very challenging as a marketer to track or properly collect data from your online activities or from other activities that they are out of your control or they are going through third-party uh, providers. So more and more people are turning are, are turning into the first-party data. First-party data, the data that we collect, and it's for example, if you have, um, if you do frequent Viber SMS or WhatsApp messages or SMS. Uh, if you do um, newsletters, or if you collect data at the store, or if you have a loyalty card, or if you have a call center, all these are first-party data that you can utilize to understand uh, your clients better. I'm not sure how many of you remember this, but I think like 10 years ago, when I first started working, I remember people saying that the average touch point of the conversion or for people to convert for a person to convert and make a make a purchase is like three to five top now it, a successful purchase or a successful conversion has 20 and up to 500 touch points for some cases 
So it's very important for you to show all the hard work you do to properly attribute all your marketing efforts uh, into the right channels and be able to understand and know the exact touch points it takes you to convert a new client, it takes you to upscale an existing client, or it takes you to even cross-sell something. And that's my favorite. However, personalization, it has been relevant since the beginning of the digital world, I think. But um, what I want to highlight here is that 80% of customers are more likely to purchase a product or a service from a brand that provides personalized experience. Also here, uh, the same research, which was done by a Google study, it shows that 62% of um, clients dropped a brand or a company completely just because of one bad experience. So if you have all your data collected and you have a personalized approach and you know your clients, it's less likely to have, for them to have a bad experience or even if they have a bad experience, you have more chances to change that experience, to turn that experience into something uh, positive. But you can't have personalization on your activities if you don't have the data to do personalization uh, campaigns. Some more fun facts. Right? Fun facts. Um, Harvard Business Review did their research in 2023. Uh, it was a 14-month it started in 2022 and lasted until 2023. So it was a 14 month long study and they interview 46,000 shoppers for a really big um, retail company. And based on that, they found some really key important uh, metrics that out of all 46,000 shoppers and clients this brand had, 7% from them, they were only um, um, clients in the in the online store. Twenty percent of them were only buying from the physical store, and seventy three percent, which is way more than uh, uh, half of them, they used multiple channels throughout their shopping journey. So this is to show how important it is a multi-channel approach and um, or with many touch points for clients. My four steps, according to MailChimp, that I follow them by heart uh, on how to run a multi-channel campaign. It doesn't matter the scale, even if it's like a small campaign or it's like a huge campaign that you run with multiple departments in your company. There are four things that are always important and mandatory. Choose the platform you will use for your multi-channel uh, activity. Identify your target audience. So know the data and know who you are talking to. Engage in cross-channel promotion. And definitely measure your results frequently. So you can properly understand what's working and what's not and how your target audience reacts to your multi channel campaign. So then I would say I put together some um, my best practices uh, that we do for many of our clients in 2024 that it seems they are working. Uh, the number one advice I always say to clients is you have a CRM. And if you have a CRM, properly gather, collect data, keep it tidy, keep it updated, because a CRM, uh, such as HubSpot or Salesforce, but there are other options as well there, these are the most popular. Uh, a CRM will help you gather different um, data across various channels into one platform. So it will make it very easy for you to review and collect and analyze and check the results rather than having to visit 
many different channels, visit your analytics or visit your website or whatever to gather the data. Have a CRM and be proven uh, as your most powerful uh, ally. Plus with the CRM, you keep the historical data of your clients as well. Number two, I will say it's analytics. Yes, we all know Google Analytics, but then uh, analytics such as Adobe Analytics or any other tools, because again, there are a lot of options that help you capture data consumers and connect with your CRM are very valuable. You add this analytics on your website, you can have Hotjar, for example, instead of Adobe. And these analytics help you measure and track how many people they call you, how many people they visit in your social, what they did, what's their drop-off point, how much time they spend on your website, how much time they spend on your mobile app, all these digital data that you need uh, for your digital campaigns. But this data, again, need to be um, need to be connected with your CRM so you know that if I'm a client and I always buy from the store and you have my data in your CRM and I decide because you launched an online offer and I decided I saw your newsletter and I decided to make a purchase online, you have all my data in one place and you know that I'm a frequent offline buyer, but whenever you have an online exclusive sale, I buy online, for example. And then it's uh, transactional transactions and purchase data as we may call them. One of the, of the most important things is to, most, most critical things actually, is to be able to understand um, offline or human interaction and gather those data. So if I give you a call and I have a very bad experience or you lost my reservation or you lost my offer or you didn't speak, uh, very clearly, so I couldn't understand anything. Uh, I'm having a bad experience. However, you would like to know about this uh, bad experience I had. If you have, if you have tools or a CRM that can support call integration or AI voice recognition, which almost everyone, every CRM tool does that, and even if the CRM tool doesn't do it, there are a lot of APIs or other third-party apps that you can connect without additional costs on your CRM and track all this data. Uh, but it's important to be able to understand and analyze this, um, this type of uh, data as well, following your uh, online sales, your, your offline sales, uh, your ERP, and and conversational intent. If you are doing messages or messages or activities on Viber, WhatsApp, or if you are using uh, software such as Invoca or in concert from Playtex, you need this um, information again so you can monitor a journey, a client journey and behavior. So I included also at the end some case studies and tools for you to use on, but this case study, I chose this one because uh, it was a very small brand. And I wanted to show how success, the successful results of a, a small brand that doesn't have a big brand recognition, how a multi-channel uh, approach helped them um, increase um, their leads by 20, 50, by 250%. Uh, which was amazing for them. So this um, athletic club in uh, in San Francisco uh, they didn't have a lot of budget and they wanted to to launch a new class of as part of their regular gym classes, let's say. So what they did, they built a landing page on their website with the right pixels. They ran a Facebook ad and they added a poster in the club's uh, room uh, with a QR code. So 
regardless of if you saw the ad or if you saw the landing page directly or if you saw the poster and you scan it, you were going into a landing page to complete your information. But then the whole process was automated. You're completing your, your, your information. You were receiving uh, your discount for the booking. Then you were receiving a reminder for your booking. Then a thank you message. And then after, after completion, you are receiving a thank you uh, message on your WhatsApp or your email, depending on what you wanted, plus a coupon to use for your next visit, which they didn't know when they originally signed up. Uh, and like this multi-channel approach for one campaign helped them increase uh, their sign up, which was amazing. So yes, I gather some uh, fun facts about what I believe are the most popular industries, such as retail, e-commerce, fintech, uh, and media and entertainment. Uh, I think they might be helpful, but I would love to discuss this more with you. Uh, for example, for retail, um, omnichannel marketing, it means that you provide a seamless experience from the store to the online store and your e-commerce platform to your social media and your mobile app if you have one. This goes for product availability, discounts, know who the client is, uh, remember their data and ensure they get what they want as they would do if they were talking to you. Uh, for online businesses only, uh, it's easier at the same time because you have less channels to use, but again, uh, you, it would be beneficial to integrate various touch points on your e-commerce uh, journey. Your mobile apps, your emails, uh, social media, of course, in order to enhance a customer's journey. For, fintech, for the fintech sector, it's ideal. Because in the fintech sector, apart from the obvious, which is your website, your app, you also have the in-app activities to enhance conversions uh, from within the application, to follow client's like journey, to know when was the last time they did an action, and give them and react accordingly. And for the media and entertainment industry, uh, allows you to, it's, even if you have like an OTT platform or even if you have a mobile app or it's streaming um, a web-based only application, um, by having a multi-channel and omni-channel approach, you ensure, you ensure that your content is accessible for your, for your users whenever and they enjoy using and watching content from your platform at any given time uh, yeah and then i added at the end i added some tools that can help you achieve all these things and you can find more useful resources for crm website traffic emails um, some references for marketing mix and programmatic advertising it's not as difficult or challenging to do uh, in general, but yeah, so that was all from me. So let's discuss more or share any questions, if you like. Thanks very much, Davriana. Um, I'm sure there will be questions, so we'll leave it open to the floor. Um, uh, if anyone has any questions, please go ahead. If you don't have a question, I want to ask you a question. Like, what do you guys do for your activities or your marketing campaigns? Do you use various channels? Do you use one thing? And if you do various channels, is everything connected? Or what's your situation? No one brave enough to take that one.
I don't have ah, uh, there's a question. Hi, Jane. Um, I don't have any examples now that in the presentation, but I can share some with you from a company we collaborated in Italy. They did these billboards with a technology that calls breath, and because that billboard was measuring people uh, that they saw or interact or took pictures of it. I think it was with an AI and a camera, I don't remember the details. Um, and it was leading everyone into using a filter or on a landing page. They had to get to the landing page to claim a coupon or they used the filter if it was on social media to use to gain a coupon or a point, I think. So I've seen it with um, out of home, although it's not as frequent as you would have expected. And I think this leaves room for a lot of creativity to incorporate out of home. Uh, in omnichannel, but this should definitely be part of it. Debriana, in the beginning, you talked about having a CRM tool, for example, amongst other mm -hmm. things. One was, I think you had HubSpot and the other was uh, Salesforce, Salesforce examples, I'm, I'm assuming. Do you have any advice for people about how to go about selecting the right tools um, for their needs? I would say what I have said to my clients, because CRMs are often very expensive. Um, and they take, when you go into the expensive solutions that includes a lot of things, it takes a lot of preparation to properly analyzing your needs and collecting the right information so you can find the right solution for you. I'm always a firm believer of starting small. So understand what are the most important data you would like to you would like to gather, and start with a small part of the CRM. Start collecting data. So let's say instead of going, I don't know, full blown on the HubSpot solution, start with the small package that they do only the marketing information. Let's say start gathering data from your digital activities, and then upgrade. Once you have, you know how it works and you're familiar with it and you start getting data, move further to the operational model that you have data from within the store. And then you add, you integrate your ERP, let's say. So I would take it step by step. If, we're like, if you're like a small to medium business, if you're like a large corporation, then I think it's worth investing in a team of people doing due diligence and proper analysis of your clients and data book data and before um, deciding to which CRM to use. And I will give you a local example here from Cyprus, Costa Coffee. It's a huge brand. It's a very big brand. However, and it, it was the number and it is the number two coffee franchise in Cyprus, most popular coffee chain. Yeah. They didn't have a CRM. They had a very outdated CRM that was very limited. It could gather only clients that they subscribed or they sign up for a uh, bonus card. They didn't have like a proper 360 CRM that helped them understand if I, if I was a client online, how many times I was buying from them and everything. It took them two years of planning and investment in order to decide uh, with which solution to go, but they built a full-blown, uh, amazing CRM collecting all data now. So That's it great. depends on what you want to do. Yeah, that. thanks. That's really useful advice for the um, for the listeners. Um, another another question, perhaps, if I may. I mean, obviously, you've got experience working in other regions. I wonder if you've seen differences in the way that data is managed within MENA to the other regions and if there's any opportunities around that. Yes. So with my experience so far, because I worked mostly with Europe and the last few years with uh, MENA, is that in Europe it's more challenging because there are a lot more, a lot more restrictions on the things you can do or the data you can gather. So you really have to convince somebody to share additional information with you, but once they do, it's it's like sailing. It's very nice. Um, 
but you need to have like a strong message. Affiliate works a lot in the EU, um, referrals or sign up fees or best day gifts or something to give a push to somebody to share the data with you. And once they do, they trust you throughout the, pro the process. While from the MENA region, I found people not so easily affected if you give it if you give them like a gimmicky to sign up they don't sign up easily because i think there is it's a little bit free on um, the regulation on data and everything and i think people are not so easy to share their information however i believe the market in mina is more mature there are more technologies there and it's more mature on omni-channel uh, experiences for clients. That's why everyone's talking when they visit a MENA uh, country, they are talking about, oh, I like this store because they remember me since two weeks or one month ago that I visited them. And I think that there are a lot of opportunities for MENA to stand out and utilize uh, omni-channel approaches. Um, but the big challenge is to find a way to get somebody to share their data with you so you can convert them to a client uh, and when in europe i would say the big challenge is to maintain and have more touch points with a person after they give you their data that's great thanks very much are there any other questions um we've got a little bit of time left No? Well, with that, thank you very much to Adriana and the team at Digital Tree. Thanks for uh, sharing your knowledge on this subject. I'm sure it gives a lot of people a lot to think about um, as to how they can incorporate some of this thinking within their businesses. So thanks very much. We appreciate uh, your efforts there.